Morning. I'm not sorry, Jack. Should be asleep. Good morning. Good morning. Much better. Come here, Miles, Philippians 4. We will be there this morning to think about everyday Christianity. Beautiful day. I was breezy. Um, hope that you got to see the eclipse yesterday. It's something special to watch that. Um, Pam and I are back in the backyard and I eat. You feel the temperature drop as the moon went across the sun and our glasses we could see and you know, I just got the whole sun covered. I actually got up yesterday, set my alarm for three o'clock so I'd go ride a hundred kilometers and get back in time to watch the eclipse. I'm a space nerd, so I, I want to do that. You know, I didn't start riding a bike until the pandemic. Um, Pre-pandemic. I would go to the gym every day and swim 1,100 yards a kilometer. And that's all that I swim. I'm about 4,000 now, but then I swim about 1,100. And they closed the gym down. And I started doing some YouTube workouts, some other things, but I really wanted to get outside. So I, I didn't know a thing about cycling. So I went to Walmart. I bought me a bike off the shelf. That's not what you do during cycling. But anyway, I, I didn't know any better. I went and bought a bike off Walmart shelf. Started riding over five miles or so a day. And then once we moved here, Uncle Sam sent me some total release money. I got on Amazon and bought a road bike. Now, you still don't go to Amazon buy a road bike, that's not story. Didn't know any better. And I got to where I was riding 35 miles or so a day with it, going to Space City Cycling Club. Boy, was I in for shock. I didn't know the first thing of what I was doing. I set the gears to one level, left them there the whole ride. I thought that you found a gear that was comfortable and you just rode in that gear the whole ride. Somebody told me to start shifting gears. Boy, does that make a big difference? Much easier to ride when you shift the gears. Then, after a week or two of riding, someone came out and said, Dustin, have you ever had a bike then? A lot? You know, I put my saddle where I thought it was comfortable, and come to find out, you're supposed to go and get fit to the bike. And boy, does that make a big difference. Getting clipped in pedals made a big difference. Yeah, you know, I had no idea of any of that. And it's not uncommon even now for someone to say on Saturday, no, just if you did this, it'd make it easier, make it better. Have you ever had somebody come and give you some tips, some tricks, some things to make life a little easier? You had a coach in high school that taught you how to make a better free throw or a tackle or a goal. Did you ladies take home that and learn how to sew or cook <coughs> better? Did any of you have a career? Did you had training regularly, teaching you, helping you how to work more effectively? You know, the truth of the matter is we're all ignorant about a lot of things. And training, some tips and tricks make life a lot easier. Well, in Philippians 4, Paul gives a great deal of tips and tricks for everyday Christianity. Oh, it's a lot here in Philippians 1, 4, 1, 9. It's a lot of information. But it's all centered around a common theme. And that is how to live every single day as Christians. And as you read the text, it becomes obvious that everyday Christianity is this. Everyday Christianity is practicing truth. Where is it? Everyday Christianity boils down to one thing. Living the truth of God. Whether it's at work, or at home, or with family, or wherever. 
Everyday Christianity is living truth. We're going to do things differently this morning. We're going to read Philippians 4, 1 to 9. And then we're going to take the text thematically and think about the different themes here that Paul gave about everyday Christianity. Let's read the text together. Philippians 4, 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord of my love. I entreat Eurodia, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also to companion, help these women. Who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Now, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you've learned, received, and heard, and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. There is your formula for everyday Christianity. I do this every day, Christian. What are the details of every day? Every day, Christianity is staying. It is staying put. Paul said in verse 1 for the Thessalonians to stand firm, not be moved. But to stay put, to remain Christians, be firm in their faith. God takes no pleasure, none at all, in those who turn back and do not stand firm. Hebrews 10, 38. My righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. God takes no pleasure in those who that. Everyday Christianity is set up. Your diet and synthetic need to agree in the Lord. There was, although he tells us why, but there was some disagreement between your diet and synthetic. And they had to come to agreement in the Lord. Settle that dispute. God's people live in harmony. God expects his people to live in harmony. Romans 12, 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Harmony. Settle disputes. Don't let disputes come between you and a brother or sister, a family member, or someone else. They urge your guidance and tech to agree in the Lord. In everyday Christianity is soulless. Soulless. The Philippians were to rejoice always. No matter what life brought, they were to rejoice. How? Paul doesn't tell them to rejoice. 
Think about that for a second. Paul does not say you rejoice in this chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's not being happy all the time regarding the circumstances. But they were to rejoice in the Lord, finding solace in Jesus. Because there is solace in Jesus. Solace, isn't it? Thank you. My brain was working part right there. To find solace in Jesus, they would have every reason to rejoice. Everyday Christianity is like fastness. It's fastness. Paul told the Philippians they need to let the reasonableness be known everyone. Reasonableness in the Greek refers to humble and patient steadfastness and faith and justice. And I have corrected this slide about three or four times and still have to say it again. I'm human just like you are. But the Greek word, therefore, steadfastness. But for reasonableness, means to be steadfast in the face of justice. In other words, as their enemies came and tormented the Philippians, they were to turn the other cheek, be steadfast in the way they treated other people. Steadfast. The faith of opposition. Every day of Christianity is supplication. Supplication. Philippians had no reason to be anxious about anything. Instead, they were to in everything by prayer and supplication with excuse that their request and they know to God. You know why they were supplicate? Why they were to take the request to God? Paul's prayer works. 1 John 3 22. Whatever, whatever we ask to receive from Him, Paul, we keep His commandments and do what we see. But you understand it has to be in God's perfect will, harmony with His will. But whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Prayer alpha and prayer works. So everyday Christianity supplication. Everyday Christianity is stewed. Philippians were stewed on what is good. There is in this world a great deal of negative. A lot of people like to dwell on the negative. To look at what's bad and how bad things are and it's never got a good word to say. Philippians were not too like. Because everyday Christianity is still in what is true. Finally, brought, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think too about these things about what is honorable, true, lovely, good report. Think about those things. You know why the Philippians need to burn their hearts? Why they need to think about the good stuff in life? Because one's actions come from one's heart. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep your heart with all the influence, for from it 
flow the streams of life. Think about that. Guard your heart. All vigilant. For from it flow the streams of life. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 19, out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and death. The one must think and watch. Finally, everyday Christianity is a mission. Mission. The Philippians need to practice what they learned and received, heard and seen in Paul. They would put Paul's example and his words into practice. He calls that authority of Paul, his apostolic authority, came not from men but from so we can confidently say that every day Christianity is in truth, following truth, doing what God expects you to do. Every day Christianity practices truth. So how do you? Take what Philippians 4 teach and make everyday Christianity a part of your life. Now there are some questions you need to ask. What are you saying? What are you saying? How firm is your faith? Paul said to Philippians to stand firm, not to be moved, but to stay good. How firm is your faith this morning? David said, Psalm 66, God only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. I shall not be I'm studying days. Same thing. No matter what life wrote, David wrote in time of great effort in his own life. I'm saying, are you saying? Paul told the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 58, be steadfast, immovable. Always abound in the war of the war. Be immovable. Don't let anybody shake you. Don't let the trials of life move you from your goal, move you from Jesus. So the question must be Are you two? Are you seven? Herodians and Decky had some sort of disagreement. And they even settled that disagreement to bury the hatchet. Is there someone to whom you need to bury the hatchet? Someone to whom you need to make a move? Someone from whom you need to accept an apology to the past? Jesus expects us to be a forgiven people. As he taught in the model of prayer, Matthew 6, 14, 15. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your So are you saying? Do you have some disagreement that needs to be settled? I'm trying to get it right this time. 
finding solace in you? Are you finding, regardless of what happened, regardless of temptation, regardless of other trials, health struggles, family struggles, anything else, not in your life? Are you able to find solace in Jesus and to give? Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. See, rejoicing in the Lord is different than rejoicing. Christians can rejoice because of the Lord, because of Jesus, as they find solace. See, you can rejoice no matter what life throws you. I don't care what it is, how bad life gets. You can rejoice in the Lord because God is faithful. God is going to walk right beside you no matter what. He's going to be with you. He's going to hear your prayers. He's going to answer according to his word, according to his, his will. You can rejoice in God's great promise. You can rejoice in that heavenly home that is promised to you. Promised to you by God who cannot lie. You can take solace in it. Thus, you can rejoice. Or he said that. The Philippians were steadfast and faced their enemy. If they were left in reasonableness, their steadfastness be known to all men. Someone who stood you. Tell you that. Well, people come to stood you all the time. How do you act? Someone. Do you respond to the treatment way Jesus did? First Peter 2 23. When he was reviled, he did not revile and turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But continued in trusting himself to him who judges justly. Jesus did not retaliate. Yet he trusts himself to him who judges justly. He was steadfast in face of all this. Like the Philippians were the people. Are you steadfast, resolute? Face of the face. How's it girl? Are we in everything taking your request, your supplication, with thanksgiving, letting them be made known to God? That's what the Philippians were to do. You see, Jesus expects his people to pray. In some of them out, the Lord gave the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, whatever you want to call it. And before he gave it, here's what Jesus said. Matthew 6, verses 5 and verse 7 said the same thing. When you pray. The Lord didn't say if you pray, but when you pray. Yes, I believe that the Lord can support it. When you pray, see the Lord expects his people pray. First Thessalonians 5 17, pray without ceasing. I ask you again, how's your prayer? Are you suffering? Well, so suffocating is an important part of every day of Christianity. Take 
All your hopes, all your fears, all your worries, all your frustrations, your hurt, your everything else. Take them to God. Cast all your anxiety on Him, for He cares for you. God cares about you. I want you to bring your cares, your burdens to Him. And do so. Are you stewing? Are you stewing? I've known a lot of negative people in my lifetime. A lot of people who like to look at the negative bits out of life. Who always want to talk about how bad things are. How bad things are in the country or in the world or in their life or at their job or now, everything is just horrible. You know people like that too, right? Paul said, that's not a great Christian. Paul said every day Christian is stewing, thinking about what is good. The Philippians would fill their minds with what? What fills your mind. On what do you do? What do you think about that? Paul told you exactly what to think about. Philippians 4 8. Let, let me encourage you to do something this week. Take Philippians 4 8. Read that text every day. And then find something that is good, commendable, excellent, and think about what the verse has to do. Do it. Do on what is good and lovely and worthy of praise. Find those things. Fill your mind with those things. Do what? Finally, I ask Are you submitting? Are you submitting? Submission is a part of everyday Christian. Well, I, I know that's not a very popular word in this day and time. We'd be free. Do what you want to do. Do what your heart tells you to do. And, and just be happy. Well, quite honestly, you can't do what your heart tells you to do because the heart is the sequel above all things. Following your heart's going to get you in trouble every single time. It's the sequel. Then tell you the truth. You can't follow your heart. Rather than to submit to the will of God, to His authority, to His Word, which is true and never deceitful. Philippians, to submit to Paul's apostolic authority. You see, His apostolic authority, His example, came directly from God. Paul said to the Thessalonians, to our Thessalonians 2 13, we also thank God constantly for this. That when you receive the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is the word of of God. When Paul taught, not the word of man. You know what sounded good to him, or to Silas, or to Timothy, or anybody else who were traveling with him? Not what sounded good to him. What came from God. And so when Paul said at the end of Philippians 4, 
point to nine, and he said in verse nine, follow his example. Follow his teaching. He wasn't telling Philippians, look, I've got everything figured out to do what I say and, and, and just follow what I do. No. He was telling them to submit to God. Because his word, his authority, came not from men, but his word of God. And thus, as you live every day of Christianity, you submit to Paul's apostolic form. And to Matthew, John, Peter. Paul the book. You submit to that very word. Are you submitting to that word? You know this morning. Talked about everyday Christianity. How you live daily as Christian. Paul acted like a coach here and told you how you can live as a Christian every day. So the question you got to ask yourself is this Are you a Christian every day? All the time. Do you act like a Christian when it's Sunday morning and you're gathered with the saints? But not on Tuesday morning when you bring the work or wherever? Are you a Christian all the time? Living as God wants you to live every day. You are blessed to live on the good. Come with me. Pledge anew to live every day. How oh, is your everyday mission? You need to come this morning and claim that everyday Christianity right now. Thank you.